What's going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today we are going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and we are going to continue our coverage over the X-Men reading order. Now today we are going to wrap up the Brood Saga which of course is one of the not biggest, but one of the first sagas that went on in the X-Men comics under Chris Claremont. But with this saga, it actually launches a second X-Men title back in the 1980s, which we are going to cover next week, which is New Mutants. But before we can cover that book right there, we have to cover the last three issues of The Brew Saga. So I do hope you enjoy today's comic book video. And if you do, Hit that like button down below and subscribe, but here we go. Now getting back into Uncanny X-Men number 164, you have to remember what happened in our last video. Now remember, the X-Men were kidnapped by the Brood, but at the end of our video, the X-Men were able to get away from the Brood planet on Iliandra's spaceship. Except when they got away, of course the Brood caught up and began the process of surrounding the X-Men Iliandra's ship. But here's the thing though, as we dive into Uncanny X-Men number 164, the Brood are not shooting to kill the X-Men, they're hoping that the X-Men will go ahead and surrender. And the reason why is because you have to remember, in our last video we found out the Queen of the Brood actually implanted different brood eggs in each of the X-Men. And once those eggs hatch, of course, their bodies will change into brood people and they will join the brood society. And so that is why the queen does not want to kill the X-Men because once the brood takes over the X-Men bodies, they also gain their powers as well. And so she's telling her people, just try to catch them alive because they also have the eggs of the brood inside of them and they can become very powerful brood members. Now here comes another problem for the X-Men. Iliandra actually tells the X-Men that they're unable to warp away from the brood because a certain part of the spaceship was actually damaged and so someone has to go out there and actually fix the spaceship. Of course, it will be Kitty Pride because while she's out there, she can phase through the attacks the brood are trying to use to stop the X-Men from getting away. Now here comes another thing I do want to bring up. Wolverine knows about the eggs implanted in the X-Men because you have to remember, in our last video, Wolverine has a healing factor. And with his healing factor, he was actually able to defeat the egg inside of him. But the thing is, he's the only X-Men that knows about the eggs being implanted inside of each X-Men member. And so he has not told the X-Men that there are eggs inside of them. And so far right now, Wolverine's wondering what should he do? But the reason why I'm bringing it up right now because while you have the X-Men use their powers or different weapons on a ship to fight off the brood so that Kitty Pryde can fix a ship and they can warp away, Storm and Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, begin to feel weird. Now if you're wondering why Carol Danvers is here, remember in one of our earlier videos, Carol Danvers was actually attacked by Rogue, and so she lost a lot of her memories. And so she went over to the X-Men hoping that Charles Xavier could fix that. But when the X-Men got kidnapped by the Brood, so did she. But the reason why I'm bringing her up now is because Storm and her begin to feel weird. We all know why, because the egg inside of them are beginning to hatch, but at the same time, Carol Danvers unlocks a new form when it comes to her powers, and we see the beginning phase because out of nowhere, there is a huge bright light right when Kitty Pride is actually able to fix the ship and Eleandra is able to warp them away from the brood. But before we are actually able to see what happened to Carol Danvers, we have to jump back down to Earth. And the reason why, because we picked up with Charles Xavier, because he has no idea what happened to the X-Men. All he knows is the X-Men are missing and he's scared to know what happened to them. 
But at the same time, we learn that him and Colossus' little sister, Ileana, both live in the mansion by themselves. Now, Ileana is about 14 or 15 years old. And you have to remember, because as we covered her origin story and the magic and storm storyline, she stayed in limbo for about seven to eight years. And so she quickly aged up to 14 and 15. Now, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because this is actually the beginning of Marvel getting ready to release the second X-Men title, of course, being New Mutants. And we're going to cover that here in a couple weeks, actually. But either way, though, we know what's going on with Charles Xavier and Liana. Now we do learn what happened to Carol Danvers and we learn that she was able to actually unlock her new binary form. Now binary is actually very cool and I wish Marvel did more with it. They did, but I wish they did even more. But either way, when it comes to her binary form, she can now generate heat, light, radiation, and access to all other forms of energy along the electromagnetic spectrum on an almost solar scale. And so she's actually really, really powerful. But either way though, you actually have her give the spaceship enough juice so that the X-Men and Eleandra can continue to live but also continue to get away from the brood. Now, after some time has passed by, we actually pick up with Nightcrawler checking up on Kitty Pride. And the reason why, because while she was outside a spaceship earlier trying to fix it, she was actually hit and she got a pretty bad cut. But to Nightcrawler, he's surprised to see that her cut is actually healed up. And so he tells Kitty to stay in bed, but then he quickly goes over to Cyclops to tell Cyclops that something is going on. And honestly, he has no idea what's going on because Kitty Pride was able to heal very quickly and that is not normal. Now Wolverine pops out and say, listen, it's better off you not knowing. But then Cyclops can tell that Wolverine is hiding something, but of course, Wolverine is too scared to tell the X-Men that they could possibly die because the eggs inside of them will sooner or later take over their bodies. Now we actually do jump over to Storm and this moment is really important. And the reason why, because Storm knows something is wrong with her and she also knows that something is wrong with every single member of the X-Men who is on the spaceship at the moment. But either way though, when Cyclops actually goes in the room to check up on Storm, that is the moment Storm realizes that there is something inside of her, an egg, a new life. And that is when she realized that this new life was probing her mind. Of course, we know what it is. It is the brood egg and it's beginning to hatch and take over her body. But with Storm freaking out, she runs away, gets into a space pod and flies away. And so now Storm is gone from the rest of the X-Men. So now they have another problem. They need to go find Storm. And you have Cyclops go back to the rest of the X-Men, Carol Danvers and Leandra to tell them, hey, Storm just left because Storm realized that something is wrong with her, but also something is wrong with us. And this is the moment where you actually have Wolverine finally tell the X-Men what is going on. He says, listen, the queen of the brood implanted different eggs in each of us. Unfortunately for you guys, because you guys do not have a healing factor, that egg is going to hatch and sooner or later, your body will be taken over by that brood. I was able to actually defeat it because my healing factor. But either way, after Wolverine tells the X-Men that, Carol Danvers is angry. She is so angry because what they did to her that she just turned back into her binary form and she blasts right out of the spaceship to go get revenge against the brood. The problem is, remember, the X-Men are in space. And so with her making a hole in the spaceship, now the X-Men could all be sucked into space. Now, of course, when we do jump over to Uncanny X-Men number 165, it does pick up with the X-Men still trying to fix the hole in the wall that Carol Danvers had made in a spaceship. And it does get played out a tad bit because it does last for about three or four pages. But of course, the X-Men are able to 
actually block the hole. But now the X-Men have another problem. With Carol Danvers now out there, they now have to find her and Storm. And so more and more problems just keeps getting added on to the X-Men. And they're wondering how can they handle all these different problems. Now we do jump back over to Earth one more time where we actually pick up with Mormon Taggart, Charles Xavier, and Stevie Hunter. And remember, Stevie Hunter is actually the dance instructor to Kitty Pride. But either way, you actually have Mormon Taggart go over to Charles Xavier. And the reason why is because she actually got word from Reed Richards about a new mutant. Of course, her code name is Karma. Once again, this is Chris Claremont beginning the process of actually opening up a second X-Men title back in the 1980s. But either way though, Charles Xavier does not want to recruit any new mutants because he's afraid something could happen to them just like the X-Men. And you have Mormon Taggart actually yell at Charles Xavier to convince him to actually get back to helping mutants across the world because if he doesn't, these mutants could actually join up with Magneto or even worse Emma Frost and with that you have Charles Xavier realize that he should continue to be a teacher to mutants like he was to the X-Men. Now we actually jump over to Storm and this moment is very important because you have Storm realize what is inside of her. She knows it is a brood egg inside of her and sooner or later it is going to take over her body and when it does it will be able to use her powers and use her body as a way to attack people across the universe. Now with that being said, that is the moment where Storm actually begins to transform into a brood member, which is very huge. But out of nowhere, the transformation is stopped. And the reason why is because Storm's spaceship has actually flown into the galactic core. Now the galactic core is really just a bunch of suns placed in one spot in the universe. And with that, it was able to send enough energy to stop the transformation. But Storm knows that sooner or later, this brood egg is going to take over her. And so you have Storm actually use the galactic core as a way to kill herself and kill the egg with her. Now we actually do jump back over to the X-Men who are still with Iliandra, which is Cyclops, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Colossus, and Kitty Pride. But we pick up with Cyclops, Wolverine, and Leandra because Wolverine is actually telling Iliandra that since the X-Men are going to die, they should do one last thing, which is try to kill off the brood or try to kill as much as they can. And so Wolverine and Leandra actually agree, but then out of nowhere, Cyclops agree. And I want you to focus on Cyclops for the next few minutes of this video. But then you have Wolverine find out that Nightcrawler is actually a Christian. And that is very important for the character of Nightcrawler because Wolverine looks at Nightcrawler like a demon, a demon who's actually praying to God, which is different. But at the same time, Wolverine is somebody who does not believe in any kind of God. But either way, you actually have the two of them talk to each other about Nightcrawler's religion. But then we pick up with Kitty Pride. And remember, at this point in Marvel Comics, Kitty Pride was just 15 years old. She was the youngest X-Men ever on the team. But with that being said, she is trying to rest because she's currently living in a nightmare with the idea that sooner or later, she'll become a brood. And she hates that idea so much. But either way though, in her nightmare, she's actually watching her own funeral. And then at the end of her own funeral, she watches her dead body actually turn into a brood and then pull her into the grave. And then she wakes up screaming because either way, she's living in a nightmare and she's also dreaming the nightmare that she's currently living in. Now you do have Colossus come by and actually check up on Kitty Pride. And remember at this point in Marvel Comics, Colossus and Kitty Pride are not dating. Yes, they have kissed multiple times before, 
but they have never made it official that they are a couple. But either way, Colossus is here to tell Kitty Pride that he is not going to sit around and just cry over and over because he knows that sooner or later he is going to die. Instead, he is going to make sure that his last moments in life is something that he can enjoy. And honestly, I like that idea. And of course, they do end up kissing one more time. But then out of nowhere, they get a very, very strange visit by someone. And that person is Storm. Now remember, Storm just died. And so the question is, how can Storm be here right now if she was just killed moments ago? Of course, this is a vision. But before Colossus and Kitty Pride are able to learn more about why Storm is there, she disappears. Now, Colossus and Kitty Pride are not the only ones to see Storm because moments later, while Wolverine and Nightcrawler are having a chat, that is the moment where they actually see Storm once again. And the question is now, why is Storm popping in and out all over the place? What is going on? Is she alive or is she dead? Now you do have Storm appear one more time. And when she does, that is the moment where Iliandra's spaceship is actually eaten whole by what looks like one of the Brood's monster ships. Remember, the Brood's don't actually have spaceships. They use their powers as a way to take control of these monsters. And we are actually going to learn the actual name of these spaceship monsters and learn about their origin story. But at the same time, you have Storm say that this one in her have become one and you're kind of like what do you mean by that now we do jump over to uncanny x-men number 166 where we actually pick up with a double size issue so a lot of things happen in this one book alone but we actually pick up with a colonized world known as the Madrazar that has been taken over by the Brood race. Now we see the Brood actually trying to capture a being called the Ankanti. Now we've seen these beings before because these are the beings that the Brood use as a way to travel throughout space. And so with that, we see the Brood releasing some kind of virus to make the Akanti become their slaves. Now out of nowhere, you do have Carol Danvers appear as binary and she just wipes out every single brood person that's on this planet at the moment but then she tries to free the Akanti because she knows the Akanti is not part of the brood race it was just a slave but then you had the Akanti say that no matter what happened the virus is already inside of it and so sooner or later it's going to be a slave for the brood no matter what and so the only way to make it free is to actually kill it off and so Carol Danvers actually kills this Akanti. Now you do have Carol Danvers be confronted by Storm. And this is huge because Carol Danvers is confused how Storm is able to talk to her in the middle of space because Storm cannot survive in space like that. But at the same time, Carol Danvers remembers that Storm was infected by the brood as well. So she should be a brood by this time. But of course, you have Storm say that she was able to get rid of the egg inside of her when she had committed suicide. But either way, you have Storm say that this is actually her astral form. And she's saying that she is actually one with the Akanti body that she is currently using. And you have her tell Carol Danvers, listen, I need you to come back with me and the X-Men. We're hiding inside this Akanti being's mouth right now and is helping us travel throughout space. And so of course, that is the moment where you actually had Carol Danvers reunite with the X-Men after leaving just the last issue. Now, of course, once you have Carol Danvers get back with the X-Men, the X-Men give her a hard time because remember, when Carol Danvers found out that she could have been planted with the egg inside of her, she freaked out and just left the spaceship and left the hole in the spaceship that almost killed the X-Men. And so she does apologize for her mistake and the X-Men do forgive her. And everyone is kind of happy for this quick moment. But then out of nowhere, you have Kitty Pride get upset because again, 
everyone knows the X-Men are going to die except Wolverine and Kitty Pride can't see why everyone is trying to have a good time. Everyone should be angry, sad, and mad about the idea that they could possibly die down the road. But either way, you have Iliandra and Wolverine favor vengeance against the Brood on their home world to actually go after and kill the Queen and kill as many others as they can. Except that is the moment where you actually have Storm offer a different way or a different plan. Now this is where you have Storm actually explain more about the Akanti race and the Brood. And she says that when the Brood first came to their universe, they discovered the Akanti, these large but gentle creatures that made easy prey and excellent spaceships for the Brood to use. Now, in the Brood's early raids, they were able to actually capture the main Akanti, the prophet singer, and he is the soul to all Akantis across the universe. And without him, the Akantis are actually a doomed race. Now his corpse is actually being used right now as one of the Brood's major cities. And matter of fact, we saw that in our last video because Wolverine was going around in that city. So that corpse is the, basically the prophet singer of the Akanti. Now there is a new prophet singer. It was just recently born. It's the one that has come one with Storm, the one Storm is using right now as a way to travel through space with the X-Men and Carol Danvers. But she says, until the old Prophet Singer soul is transferred over to the new Prophet Singer soul or new Prophet Singer's body, the other Akantis will not follow this new one. And so the X-Men must go down there and actually free the soul of the old Akanti as a way to basically make this new one become completely strong. Now you have Cyclops actually tell Binary and Storm to cause a distraction as a way to keep most of the brood busy while the rest of the X-Men teleport down to do their mission, which is to free the soul of the old Prophet Singer. But you have Wolverine disagree with this plan and his reasoning is actually a good one because he says that him, Storm, and Carol Danvers are the only three people whose eggs are completely gone from their body. The rest of the X-Men still have theirs. And so Wolverine says he cannot truly trust all the X-Men because they could actually switch sides in the middle of the battle because that means the egg had finally taken over their bodies completely. Now Cyclops says fine, then kill us. Just go ahead and kill us now, which is something Cyclops would never say. So again, another thing I want you to focus on when it comes to Cyclops. But of course, Wolverine and Cyclops are this close to fighting between each other, except Kitty Pride is able to calm both of them down. Now you do have Storm and Carol Danvers actually do a flyby over the dead body of the Prophet Singer. Now remember, the reason why, because these two characters are going to be a distraction while the rest of the X-Men actually teleport down and sneak into the place and begin the process of actually freeing the soul of the Prophet Singer. Now, out of nowhere, you do have a brood telepathically contact the queen, informing her that one of the X-Men has begun the process of actually turning into a brood, meaning that the rest of the X-Men have no idea there is a traitor in their midst. And this brood actually tells the queen about the plan of the X-Men. And so now the queen knows what to do. She must stop the X-Men on the ground and also the X-Men in the air. But then we get into the section where you actually have the story jump back and forth between two settings where you have the X-Men fighting on the ground and you have some of the X-Men fighting in space. And so while we're going back and forth between these two settings, I do want to point out two things. The first is actually Kitty Pride because Kitty Pride actually does phase away from the rest of the X-Men and the reason why because she almost got grabbed by something so she had a phase away and now she's lost. But at the same time, Wolverine realized that Cyclops is becoming more verbally abusive. Again, not physically 
physically, verbally. And Wolverine is wondering what is going on with Cyclops. And so Wolverine is very concerned for the leader of the X-Men. Now I do want to focus on Kitty Pride real quickly. And the reason why, because remember, Kitty Pride did phase away from the rest of the X-Men. But after she did that, she found a pile of dead bodies that belonged to dead brood members. And the question is, what is deep in the skeleton of the prophet singer that is actually hunting the brood and the brood can't stop it this is going to introduce a character that a lot of x-men fans truly care for but unfortunately we are unable to learn who that character is because we have to jump back over to kitty pride and storm and the reason why because these two characters are getting overwhelmed by the large numbers of brood in space and it seems like these two characters could possibly be killed by the brood but at the very last second that is the moment they get saved by the star jammers of course cyclops father corsair and his group of space pirates are here to actually help out the x-men and eliandra now we do get back to the X-Men on the ground. Matter of fact, we focus on Wolverine. And the reason why, because Wolverine began to realize that something is up with Cyclops. Cyclops is more strict. Cyclops is not actually hitting the targets. And matter of fact, Cyclops has become more verbally abusive, which means Wolverine knows that Cyclops has actually begun to turn. And he learns it for sure when he takes off the visor of Cyclops' show that he has begun the process of turning into a brood, which is huge. But then you have Cyclops, or brood Cyclops, actually use his optic beam as a way to knock out the rest of the X-Men. And the Queen does help out too. And so now all the X-Men have been captured and are now prisoners to the brood Queen. And so we actually jump over to Kitty Pryde who's still being chased down by a bunch of different brood creatures. Now, while she's being chased down, it does seem like that she could possibly die. But at the very last second, a bunch of fire appears, killing off some of the brood. The rest of them are too scared to move. That is when we learn that what killed those brood earlier, which is a pint-sized dragon. Yes, a pint-sized dragon. You should know who this is. But either way, Marvel doesn't tell us much about this dragon. And the reason why, because Kitty Pride and the rest of the brood that is still alive, they all get caught by some brightly glowing chamber and they're all mesmerized by it. And so you have all of them walk into this chamber. Now there is a moment where you actually have the Cyclops brood and the queen kind of excited because they're able to finally catch the X-Men and they're going to have more brood people on their side when the rest of the X-Men actually turn into the brood creatures they're supposed to turn into in a few moments. But then that is the moment where Cyclops Brood does not know how to control his optic beam because you have to remember when it comes to Cyclops, he could never truly control his optic beam. And so with this Brood, it's the same thing. He is unable to actually control his optic beam. And so it goes all over the place and you have Wolverine actually use that as a way to break the shackles that were put on him knock out the queen and then make the rest of the brood actually realize that if they move one inch wolverine will kill the queen meaning that they had to release the rest of the x-men but once that is done right there you actually have the rest of the x-men being able to find kitty pride where you have kitty pride show the rest of the x-men that chamber that she found earlier of course the chamber that is holding holding not holding holding the prophet singer's soul and so the chamber is so amazing that you have the rest of the x-men just gazing at the chamber but then you have the queen realize that because the x-men and her and also the brood inside the x-men begins the process of actually corrupting this chamber the chamber begins to turn black and so it does seem like the queen could possibly finally win because that means the rest of the X-Men are beginning the process of actually turning into the brood. But that is the moment you have Wolverine realize that he might not have a choice. He might have to go ahead and kill off the rest of the X-Men because they're beginning to turn into the brood. 
And so you have Carol Danvers actually come in and stop Wolverine. And the reason why, because she realized what's going to happen next, which is the old prophet singer actually release his soul up to the new prophet singer. Once that is done right there, that means the new prophet singer actually now has the ability to heal everyone on the X-Men from their brood virus or brood egg, whatever. And so when Wolverine looks back over at the rest of the X-Men, they're all normal. They were cured of their brood egg. And so that means that the X-Men can finally go home. But at the same time, this home world or this world the brood was using temporarily actually blows up as well. And so the X-Men are actually able to finally defeat the brood and go back home. Now, the prophet singer doesn't stop there because after a while, while the X-Men are all relaxing and trying to realize they're gonna be okay, that is the moment where you actually have Storm walk back in. And the prophet singer was actually able to cure Storm, bring Storm back to life. Honestly, it makes no sense to me. But Storm is alive again. And so the X-Men are all excited because everyone is okay until Wolverine says, wait a second. The queen did say something. The queen said there was still one more X-Men who was infected by the brood. That X-Men is back on Earth. Of course, Wolverine is talking about Charles Xavier. But after this video, we actually jump right into New Mutants. Yes, New Mutants. I do hope you enjoy today's comic book video. And if you do, hit that like button down below and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions on books I should read, well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's comic book video.